Alright, well it's about bloody time that I actually do, finally do a video, and I have a little bit more energy today. So, we're going to do a little bit of the first steps of creating my little glass cutting wire. Which, I have no idea if it's actually going to work. Um, it probably won't, but let's have some fun with it anyway. Um, if you're wondering what that rushing sound is in the background, that is my space heater which I have running because it is extremely, extremely cold in this room right now because it is also extremely, extremely cold outside. <clears throat> so basically, what I'm doing right now, and this is actually an electrician's trick, if you, have to, if you ever have to work with uh, this kind of wire, uh, it's known as Romex or Lumex, um, a really easy way to strip the wires is to just take a sharp knife, and uh, in school they gave us these neat linoleum, uh, I think they were linoleum knives, they're like these hooked knives that just, you'd uh, swipe it right down the insulation, and then you'd have it. So, I'm going to hold on to this ground wire for other projects, I'm just going to toss that over there, and then I need <coughs> a couple of reasonably thick sections of this black and white wire. I don't really need both black and white, but I may as well uh, use them anyway. So I'm going to make them about twice... Oh, that's not going to do any good, is it? Okay, so let's see... Is that going to be long enough, I think? Yeah, that should do the trick. So I'm going to make them about twice twice the length of the battery packs. The reason why I've picked that particular length is because I'm hoping to thread the copper wire up underneath the battery contact so it makes contact with all of the batteries and thus reduces the amount of resistance being uh, encountered uh, because I need to make sure that as low resistant that um, the wire is basically the highest resistance part of the whole uh, circuit. Um, so, oh, jeez, that went to off like a rocket. That was actually pretty intense. All right, so I'm just going to cut two sections of this, uh, this wire here. I'm going to go ahead and do black and white just for fun. So, very, 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 very thick, uh, copper wire that I picked up at the local, uh, hardware store. I was actually going to initially use it for a improvised uh, battery welder, but um, and I'm probably still going to work on that. That's why I have the I'm saving the ground ground wire. All right. So the next step is to do this. Now, I've already done a proof of concept. I probably should have recorded this while I was figuring out how to do it. But basically, I'm going to take these little ferrules. I think that's what they're called. Um, that are actually meant for heating wire, which is what this is, so, you know, that's a good thing. And we have to make a mechanical connection onto the copper because solder is going to melt at the temperatures that we're going to be operating this uh, Kenthal wire at. So, we use the crimpers that I have here, and the ferrules, and the wire, and we're going to do the wire up that way. So the next step is to cut a uh, 13, I don't know, probably I'm going to need a couple extra centimeters, so I'm going to cut a 15 centimeter section of this canthal. Um, so I'm just going <laughs> to grab this very expensive uh, set of calipers because it's the only ruler-esque thing I have on hand at the moment. And uh, then I'm going to kind of tuck on this wire a little bit to straighten it. That's good enough. Uh, and then I need my wire cutters. So um, I'm going to need about a centimeter on each end for the mechanical connection. So let's make it about 15 centimeters long. There we go, there's 15 centimeters. Thankfully I have uh, 
enough of this Kenthal to uh, make mistakes and play around with, and it's reasonably cheap. So that's more than enough Kenthal to uh, completely wrap around this light bulb, which is a desired result, because I want to basically wrap it around here, heat that glass up to about a thousand degrees, and then dunk it in cold water. And it should just make a very clean snap on that glass. And that's what's been taking me so long for doing the teardown of these uh, bulbs, because I wanted to be a little more surgical in the taking apart of the bulb, because, you know, I could have just smashed the thing with a hammer, but I want to play with it a little bit. So, for now, I'm going to try to build this rig uh, that will enable me to make a clean cut on the glass. Now, I don't know if it's actually going to work or not, but, you know, it's worth a try. So now I need two of these ferrules, just like that. And then I'm going to take these uh, big, big cutters here, and I'm going to cut uh, enough insulation off to basically just leave me enough room for the ferrule and then just a little bit more. So I'm going to make a mark in the insulation there, and then I'm going to make a mark in the insulation on this one. There we go. Now I know this might be the completely wrong way to be going about this, and, you know, I acknowledge that. I don't honestly know for sure myself. But the purpose of this project is to experiment and learn and, you know, basically just see what happens. So, before you leave anything nasty in the comments, consider that I am doing this primarily for the purpose of learning how to do it. Or not learning how to do it, but learning how these things work by playing around with it and working with concepts that I've had in the past. Now, I'm going to grab this bottle of acetone and some paper towel. I'm just going to clean... There, there's uh, some powdery gunk that's inside the uh, insulation of these wires that I want to clean off real quick. So, just a little bit of acetone. Polish it right up. You can see there's a kind of a gunky residue there, so just clean that off really well. Because we want this uh, connection that we're making, being as it's a mechanical connection, all of the components of that connection have to be very, very clean in order to uh, effectively... Oh, that's a lovely noise. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Um, they have to be very clean in order to conduct electricity, so... I'm also going to give the cancel wire a little wipe on both ends, just like this. I actually find I like the smell of acetone. Probably a lot of people will disagree with me on that one, but uh, it's got kind of a, kind of a not unpleasant odor. Alright, so the next thing is to take the little ferrule, and we're going to slip it onto the copper wire. And then we're going to take the canthal and stick about a centimeter of it up into the ferrule with the copper, like so. so what, what is a centimeter? About that much? Because that's how much I left. So we're going to work with that much. Come on, get in there. All right, so there's canthal wire and the copper wire inside the ferrule, and then we need to take the crimpers here, and we're just gonna crimp down on the, oops, oh that's not good, uh, sorry, getting a little off shot here, get in there. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm trying. There we go. Alright, so now, yeah, you just gotta bear down on that until it goes click. And now, basically, that's pushed 
the canthal wire into the copper, like it's actually deformed the copper wire. Now just to make sure that it's making a good connection, I'm going to rotate this to the other side and make a second crimp a little for oops, that's the wrong slot. Okay. And I'm going to make a second crimp on the opposite side of the ferrule, a little further down, just to squeeze the whole mess together really nice and tight. So here we go. Yeah. Alright. So that looks fantastic. Now, I've put two crimps on this one just to make sure it's tight. This one only has one crimp. That crimp didn't actually work. Um, so there's just this one one crimp here, and it's really quite secure. Like, I'm pulling on that as hard as I can, and there it finally came out. But with the two crimps, uh, this one should be just fine. In fact, I could probably almost get away with putting a third crimp. Let's see if that works. We'll just... Uh, Right on the very end here, right on top of the canthal. Right here. That'll be interesting, because we'll be able to see what that does to the, the copper core. Yuck. There we go. That may not have been a good idea. This will have to wait and see. That, that may have compromised the integrity of the canthal. Oh, we'll see. I can always remake it. I still have plenty. Um, Alright, and then we're just going to repeat that process with the white wire. Maybe this time we're not going to crimp the very end of that. That probably that was not a, not a really great idea. But, let's go ahead and get this crimped in. Yeah. I get it? Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process one more time on the opposite side. Yeah, yeah. that's really tight. I, I'm like, I'm not being hyperbolic here about my grunting. That's uh, very tight, what I was just doing there. Alright, now feels pretty good. I'll be able to wrap that around the, the bulb fairly easily. But just for fun, um, let's go ahead. I'm just going to nip these off for the sake of expediency rather than desoldering it. Let's have a little fun. And um, I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the insulation on the base of these wires. There we go, there's that one. And there's that one. Now if I just uh, stick these in like so, this wire should start getting very hot, and it's also getting uncomfortably close to my uh, wire, or my, there we go. Now let's see just how hot this wire is actually getting. Um, when I did my initial tests, I was able to melt a piece of solder on it. It doesn't look like that's happening with this, but it's also only going to be, oh, no, there we go, see? I just, uh, off a little piece of solder there. So that's that's um, that's an encouraging result because uh, this thick wire is not getting hot at all. That's not hot at all there right at the juncture and that actually cooled off really fast because all of that uh, heat would have sunk right down into these big thick copper wires. That's a very promising result um, and uh, in case anybody's wondering there's a little, little piece of solder. I don't know if it's going to show very well on camera. There we go little piece of solder that I nipped off with the wire there. There should actually be another one somewhere around here, but uh, yeah, very good proof of concept there. Now, 
the final version is actually going to have two of these batteries, battery packs in series, and I may only, I may just set it up with two, two 18650s rather than using the whole pack of four. But there we have it. That's a very promising result for the start of getting this thing opened up. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for being patient while I've been dealing with my health issues. If you haven't already, consider clicking right here to subscribe. Right over here is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Right here is... something. I have no idea. I'll pick some playlist. And right here is a link to Patreon, which you can use to support more projects on this channel. Thanks so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.